So what do you guys think about shame? It can get more natural as we progress through the conversation. I just thought I'd start <laughs> jump straight in. <laughs> Rather than worry. It must be too fun much. at parties. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys! <laughs> what do you think about shame? <laughs> what do you think shame? about shame? <laughs> um, I mean, I've got a lot to say about shame, naturally or unnaturally. Well, yeah, what do you mean by naturally? Because that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, so I have this kind of relationship with shame where uh, because I'm always very visible or noticed, I'm always very noticeable. So I can't really like hide things as easily. And I have like lots of internalized shame in relation to things, but maybe not as much as most people, but because I'm so visible and people see, are already watching me and perceiving me all the time, then it's like point, having shame is really like a waste of time. Mm. Like I have a different, but I get more of more significant impatience with it, where I'm like, I don't, I can't be asked to be ashamed. Yeah, kind of because it's not telling you as much as it might tell other people, right? Because it's being visible all the time means that you're kind of in line hide. for a lot of yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I can't hide and manifest and build up like certain shameful habits or anything like that. Or like shameful feelings because I don't really like. Yeah. Uh, I'm always, in, when like embarrassing things happen to me all the time, like they do with everybody, but mine are like seen a lot more. Yeah. Which is always quite interesting. So it kind of makes it like I guess that's probably why I started performing. <laughs> yeah, 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 but, yeah. yeah. I had someone described the other day as being simultaneously full of shame but absolutely unashamed. Mm. As in someone, not you, someone else has been described. Yeah, so the, their behaviour, it was in a documentary and their behaviour has been described as being like really, like really unashamed, like no shame when possibly there should be, but also like full of shame, like causing, I think, I think they meant like, it caused deep shame in everyone around, but like, they had like, zero shame. Is that not shame, is that not like, <coughs> him being shamed for being a shameless? shameless? Yeah, maybe, yeah, but in, in this, it's funny, because in this, in this documentary, the things he did, I think you should be ashamed of. They're not. They weren't like. Um, like what? They, they were like. They're not embarrassing. They're like. No, no. Bad. Like he was, <laughs> it's a documentary about um, um, uh, basically like a guy that it implies that he basically got away with a murder, oh. um, and that and that he's still just living in this little tiny town where he did the murder, and everyone has to sort of put up with that. Um, and but he was also portrayed as being very arrogant so he would often apparently walk into a pub like in this little tiny village in cork he's an english guy and would um like just make everyone shut up and listen to him read some poetry um wow and he was also like um he um was a wife beater as well um they tend to go hand. Yeah, so when I say like yeah so when I say like there are reasons you should be ashamed, this is not like mm. he had a neurodivergency that yeah. was like yeah. <laughs> I mean he probably possibly did, but like, you know, uh, it was more like um he did really horrible things and behaved in a really in a way that was like like no, he was also like one of those characters like clearly like no one liked him, and they were also trying to say like just because we don't like him, and he was pretty, he's a pretty nasty character or or weird, but weird bad weird, doesn't mean he's a murderer. 
but he mm. normally is. <laughs> that's a sort of weird message of the show. But that's interesting because that's like a small community situation. So, because sometimes when I think of shame, I'm thinking of shame versus like normative rules. Mm. But in that situation, you've also got honour. So, like the idea of like the person who was murdered, their family, that being kind of a dishonour or a thing they have to live with that, yeah, shame being used might be used there as like a way to punish someone rather than just a feeling that we feel sometimes being like actively, um, yeah, like utilised as like a way of because isn't it often like a, or something? Isn't it maybe a condition of parole sometimes that you should feel ashamed of what you did? Well, you're. Did it, mm. There was this telly yeah, program recently that. about prison with Sh- Sean Bean in. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and that was really Catholic in its surprise. I mean, it made it very literal. Like they kept just going to church and talking about <laughs> individual <laughs> personalised guilt, but it was very much about that personal sense of like responsibility like I did this thing Mm. and I take full responsibility of it and that was part of the narrative of the show but also probably what well what they were kind of implying was that was it's also part of the narrative of our legal system in which you can't be granted an early release for example unless you say that you're guilty like if you say that you're not yeah. guilty you'll yeah. never get released early even though right. well, not even though really I mean the using the whole kind of language of guilty and not guilty is very like that I don't know wh- whether that ca- where the kind of original thing of guilt it must yeah the catholic church and seven deadly sins and that kind of thing I suppose but it's interesting that we still use this kind of thing of guilt. Because guilt and shame are very similar things. And um, and I was thinking when we were talking about people pleasers earlier and how it was a com- the difference of a people pleaser and then that guy who was so unashamed of being utterly shameful. Mm. And it's like, I think people pleasers tend to be filled with shame like just utterly filled with shame and constantly just trying to apologise before doing anything wrong kind of thing. Yeah, that's true. And then, but then shame also takes space in a way that like, so there's someone I can't remember who usually talked about being in how often English people, this is how they put it, and this made sense to me are like embarrassed about shame because shame's a bit too heavy an emotion like shame is something that like Europeans feel (laughs) we don't feel we like we like just get a bit embarrassed Uh, and that if you do feel one of those like heavier I don't think it was a guy but it was something around that like if you do feel one of those like heavier emotions then it's quite embarrassing to feel, oh yeah. So there's like, an, there's like a shame or like not even, there's like an embarrassment around shame. Well, so, so guilt, embarrassment and shame are all definitely related. But embarrassment, the way I would categorise them is embarrassment is something happens and it's embarrassing but everyone recognises that it hasn't breached any like norms. Guilt is like an event, isn't it? That you've or something, an action that you've done that there's responsibility for, and shame is more. I would say what you were talking about, like this idea of being visible in the eyes of others, mm. and that being kind of everyone being very keen to locate that in one person's body, like. Because that's what's weird, right? Like, when you feel shame, it's often because other people are also feeling feeling shame about you or, like, on you or something. Yeah. 
just as an experiment, I'm going to put the word A or an in front of those different words, Is that, if that's okay. Yeah. So we could talk about, you could say, oh, that's a shame. Or you could say, oh, that's an embarrassment. Or you could say, that's a guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for doing that. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a shame, but that's such a light phrase, isn't it? That's yeah. A shame. Someone said it to me the other day, sort of joking. And we, we were playing with it, saying, it, oh, that's a shame. But that's an embarrassment. Yeah. Oh, it's so much more severe. Yeah, and yeah, like, because yeah. there's the whole like embarrassment to the nation and to the country. There's like a representative element of an embarrassment. Oh, yeah. So kind of thing. you're embarrassing two other people or two. On the half. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're shamed, like. It's just you, isn't shame it? Shame is just total. Shame is, I can't, yeah, there's like the shame body and like it's yeah. all completely linked to it. Like the only, yeah, the only relationship we have with shame is with our own body and minds. But then it also, like, when you say that's a shame, it's like for this situation or for this context of this world, it was about something that didn't happen. So something didn't happen, and something, oh, that's a shame. But it didn't mean that I'm sh I'm ashamed or I'm being anything negative to me has happened. It's like the world would be better if that had happened, but it yeah. didn't happen, and that's a shame. But none of us locate that feeling of shame in ourselves. Yeah. Uh, whereas that's an embarrassment means that yeah, like there's been there's a set of rules here that you've transgressed. Yeah. And we're all feeling collectively shame but we're calling it embarrassment. So Tammy, when you were saying earlier that you get yourself into embarrassing situations as we all do, then the problem with that is because you're already very, you're hyper visible to other people. Mm. And, but does that make you feel shame or does it just make you feel more acutely embarrassed or? I, I think, so I think because I'm be, being perceived when an embarrassing thing is happening, then it just keeps it much more active. Whereas instead of kind of then, if it doesn't get seen, let's say, let's say I trip over and I fall like face first. I say, let's say this happens to me all the time. But um, if I'm walking along and that happens and then someone looks at me, I have a certain element of shame where I'm like, God, like, it's funnier because I'm a midget, which is annoying, but sometimes it does help, um, like, just myself. But I'm also like, yeah, they're going to remember that a lot. But because I know that they're going to remember that, or I know that it's going to be a lot more public and visible and not mm -hmm. mine anymore, then the shame can't be there because I become like this, and it becomes anecdotal. So but there's does that not mean the you become? But like I'm not walking off going. Even if so, so if no one sees me, I'm walking off going like God, I can't fucking like walk properly. It's so stupid. Da, 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 da. I'm like shaming myself in that, but it gets taken away from me when it's being seen. So you locate the. Whatever it is, I suppose it doesn't matter if it's shame or embarrassment or whatever. You locate that in a kind of anecdotal object that those people are going to be left with afterwards rather than in your yeah. own subject, you know, your own self. There's a, my, my clearest feel, memory when we were talking about that is like a geography video that we had to watch at school and for some reason they left this bit in where he was called Bernard and he was a guy with big ginger hair and he would like walk around and pick up rocks and stuff and talk to the camera and there was one bit where he like leapt over a groin but he like missed the groin a bit or something kind of messed it up and fell into the rocks and as he walked away he like looked at the groin with a withering look like <laughs> <laughs> and what he was doing now I realised was he was trying to locate the problem mm. externally to himself yeah and maybe you're doing that but with this like with a version of you that's in other people's mm. heads or something 
fuck. Yeah. So then what's changed relation to performance? Because we're making ourselves visible here. I mean, I know I'm asking you guys to make yourselves visible here. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, I've seen, I feel like I've seen various experiments where people have tried to, where have named the task of their performance to get reach a state of either shame or embarrassment and realised, and this is always like the, I've seen this probably once, but it feels like I've been different versions of it. Uh, the twist or the, the re revelation is always like, you can't do embarrassment, you can't do like genuine embarrassment on stage because you've named it or awkwardness or, 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 or um, shame. Um, which I'm not quite sure is, is true. I think they don't, they're just not trying, they were just not trying to good at it. Yeah, I think, because I think they're locating shame in really like, easily kind of um, recognisable things like like going to the loo on stage or, right um, like classical t like bodily taboos or sexuality or yeah whereas there's not like, I mean I, and then I've seen other performers who I think actually create maybe through like a sustained activity that everyone yeah. is going like we should just stop that. Not like in a, not because it's causing, like, oh, oh, come on now, like, that's enough. Um, and that feels like the, 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 that kind of, like, almost like, it's like a blindness to shame is shameful in itself or something like that. There's something, I think there's something about, um, if you are doing something that is like, sort of normatively understandable or shameful, mm. like you don't have any clothes on, and something that is makes you wouldn't always make you feel ashamed happened, it is, I think, doubled often. Mm. Or sometimes halved, maybe. <laughs> but like yeah, no, sometimes it is. Some, but it's like if you if you if you tell a joke and it lands badly that maybe makes you feel ashamed. Yeah. If I've also not got clothes on, or like, you know, whatever else. Um, I think it halves. Maybe it, it does. Halves but it. I, I've definitely experienced where it's. I think there is. I, I don't know. I don't know because then, 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 because then I feel like sometimes I feel like it could be like. Okay, we're all standing here. You've decided that we all have to look at you without clothes on, and now you're telling a shit joke. Mm. That's my, often the narrative in my head, I think, in those moments. Because um, this is why I'm wearing the green suit. Yeah. It's because there's a, a level of shame, re visibility reduction, which it's just literally I'm less visible. So even if this bit of artwork is bad, then you guys are going to be the people who are visible on screen. Mm. And I was wondering how that would feel in terms of the artist is still very present and like I'm still in it. I mean, I just won't show it on my social media if it's shit. That's how I'll know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, um... I'll talk about it, it's like a really interesting experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a, lot, a lot of work. I think there's, a, the thing about shame and performance, I think the only kind of shameful element that I think, the only time I think shame could succeed in performance is when there's desperation linked to it. Mm. And so, like, when you were talking about the person doing, like, the same thing over and over again and then people being eventually like, oh, come on now, give it a rest. There's yeah. an element of, like, desperation of, like, no, I'm not finished yet. And deciding that you're, like, doing something beyond what people are, com like... What yeah, and of, often for me that's been to do with, like... So, I, but the, the a performance I remember where I where we all felt quite ashamed was just someone playing the keyboard really badly 
on on purpose in a sort of arty way and singing really badly, not very good lyrics. So they're just doing everything like badly with no redeeming character. Mm. And then clearly on some level just being stubborn about that. Mm. And it was sort of brilliant because it's very simple really. It was just, they just weren't, there was nothing very interesting about it. It wasn't like, it was just sort of like, oh, he's doing that thing again where he just sort of, Almost like being, almost like going like, aren't people stupid who sing songs on stage? Mm. Uh, this is what it's like. But th- that joke like spread out. Yeah. And also he was in like good bands as well, which is weird. But he would often get a gig because he was known for the good bands and do those things. And it, but it was, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm even critical of that. I think no, it was no. really, he did, he did that, he created that atmosphere in a way that I think maybe some artists try and create just through this sort of stubbornness. Yeah. And it going on and then everyone being like, yeah, yeah, we get it now. It's, <laughs> it's sort of rubbish. Like, but I guess he's still in control, which is, so it's interesting that Shane doesn't, always have a relationship to like power like you're not always unashamed if you're in charge or shame is still can still be present if you're like directing the situation yeah yeah because I, the other thing i think i could say if this felt shameful on what after the fact sort of thing when it's out there mm. is um oh well yeah, it's really great when you can just give yourself over to someone else's project. Yeah. Like, and, and the, in that statement, know that I'm going like, those weren't my decisions. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, and, but there also is, that is also genuine. I think that like, um, it's funny, isn't it? I guess there's some things that you would do, that you decide to do, that it wouldn't be shameful because you've decided to do them and you're in control of that. Mm. And there's other things that I wouldn't be able to do in that circumstance, but if someone else said to me, do you mind doing this for my thing? I'd say I'd be less ashamed. Yeah, well, there's a transference going on there, perhaps, where it's like the person who's asked you to do the thing either doesn't have shame because they've asked you to do the thing yeah. in the first place. Or they do have shame, but they're, they're working on it. <laughs> yeah, and then, but then there's also like a pride, isn't there? Because it's like, it feels like I would go like, it, it, you know, if I did this shameful thing in my own work, I'd be like, oh, oh, I, I, that was a bit shameful. And they'd go like, yeah, but you decided you would do that. Mm. And then you did it. So like, mm. uh, whereas if it was like, oh, I did this shameful thing with someone else, it'd be like, whoa, well done. Like, you know, sort of, you, you committed yourself to their mm. work, you can question it, and then you sort of proudly, like, you can take some pride in, like, that. In overcoming, pride in overcoming your own shame. Yeah. Which is the or, classic connection, right? Yeah, or even if you don't overcome it, even if you're feeling ashamed... There's a pride in that, which is obviously can go into like de- dangerous territory, but not all, not always, and not necessarily. But like, yeah, like because because it depends what the shameful thing is. But like, the, the you know you, it's like oh, oh yeah, I actually like my memories of like a realization. Yeah, I could do that in this context, even though I, I imagined it would feel shameful. But it's because it's important for someone else in their work. Mm. And I trust, also I guess you have to trust that they're going to do something. Although obviously you'd, ho- you'd hope they'd do something good with it. In the end, I suppose, your get out clause is always that you were asked to do it and you... Yeah. Just whatever. doing a job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Turns it into labour, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's that kind of thing of, um, 
expression, I suppose, and where the expression's coming from. Like, we're kind of partly expressing ourselves in this, mm. but we're also expressing what you want to express. Yeah. Like that. Whereas if it was just, yeah, us, us doing our independent things and wanting to, I don't know, yeah, doing something shameful, that it would be our own shameful expression. Total, like, yeah. You have to own it, I suppose, so otherwise you're just going to be ashamed. Mm. I was, I, you, I picked up on something you said earlier when you talked about that guy playing the piano badly and doing everything badly, and you said there were no redeeming like qualities, and I just thought the idea of redemption was interesting alongside shame yeah yeah like what it what uh, what do we do how what do we need to decide that something's redeemed or someone's redeeming but then it gets to so much like like weird scientific thing when you're trying to separate out shame from like guilt redemption like all these other things that in like common usage are all like mixed up in it like people might say they're ashamed when they feel embarrassed or they might say that's a shame when there's yeah that's like just a colloquialism it doesn't really refer to what we're talking about or yeah like there might be some you were talking ages ago about this idea of like shame being like a tool, like being expelled from a group and then being allowed after a certain amount of time to come mm. back in. Yeah. And that being almost this like very literal idea of shame and then redemption. Yeah, because I think there's now there does seem to be the habit feels to me to be that like we need to make you to, to stop you feeling ashamed, even if the act is shameful, mm. like it is like bad. So that, that I think there is like the idea of like, and actually even if it's not that like, there's a kind of shame around shame, like and that or there's a kind there of like it's like a, like yeah. oh you don't need to feel ashamed. It's like well maybe you, mm. maybe I do need to feel ashamed for a little bit, even though there's nothing like externally, mm. and and or, or even like you know, you can sort of the way that like, actually going like. Yeah, that was a bit shameful. Immediately, like, lets the person off the hook. Where I was going, like, hey, do you know what? You can feel fine about this. Is is not in a way. I think the whole feeling fine about this feels like there's no room for growth or change, and it's like too much acceptance of the thing that you've done that you're not comfortable with. Yeah. And like, I think the same thing with like. I don't know this idea of shame and rede redemption, the shame expelling the person and then being like, you can come back in. I guess just because that made me think about the reason why I don't think I have that much shame. I mean, uh, people may hear me say that and go, uh, I think you do. But, um, but the reason why I don't think I do is because... I'm not really interested in being redeemed into the yeah. group that I've been shamed out of. Yeah, anyway. yeah, 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 yeah. M m maybe it's dodgy to make these connections, but maybe in a very slight way because of my neurodivergency, I might say I have a particular relationship with shame, but I'm not part of a, a you know, like pride. Pride is there to go like, Fuck off if you're shaming. Mm. In, like, see, like the word is it's called yeah, yeah, pride. Yeah. It's going like, yeah. uh, and that's because, like, shame has been weaponized and like, um, mm. and I guess it feels like having now said like, oh yeah, we need to like accommodate shame or habit. I can understand that, that comes from my own position of not having to like not being constantly told that I should be ashamed yeah. because of something that's like inherently you know part of who oh, I am I don't think you're listening man because 
Yeah, no, I mean, like, <laughs> that's what I mean, because I mean, I was thinking, about, you know, obviously, like, there are definitely, like, what I have experience with, what I do have experience of, I think, and I think I can account, connect this to neurodivergency, is like doing something not very well that people think I should be able to do mm. well, mm. either because they are obvious or easy, or because I'm good at some other stuff. And if you're good at that other stuff, then you should be good at that. So I'm thinking about, like, I've got a really lovely driving instructor at the moment, but if I didn't, there are lots of things I think I'd do that it'd be like, mm. can't you just do the thing? And that, my, when I think about, like, actually, well, I feel really, like, angry about shame is when I think about those experiences of, like, this is something that everyone can do, or most people can do, or people of your, like, who have your privilege or your kind of education or whatever it is, or your whatever it is, should be able to do that thing. And I can't because of the, 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 the new, neurodivergency and dyspraxia, or, or maybe just because I'm rubbish at it. Um, that feels like, that then I can go like, yeah, there's no room, like shame can fuck off. Mm. That reminded me of something which I think, because um, there's this element of shame that I, the, there's one thing of shame which I still have, which is like this laziness thing, where I can't tell if I'm being disabled if I'm being lazy. <laughs> and I can't tell the difference because maybe I am because it just when you said like I can't what, is it that I'm bad at it or is it the neurodivergence stuff does, yeah. like, in... does that only occur in sorry to cut does that only occur for maybe both of you does that only occur in moments of high visibility or does it occur in private moments as well um Probably the shame bit will be in the private moments, I imagine. Um, because if there's visibility... Mm, then you're more likely to want to tell shame to fuck off, as it were. Yeah, because I... And then I... and But that's where it that gets difficult, because... Is that because I'm lazy? that I tell shame to fuck off? Yeah. Or is that because I'm disabled that I tell shame to fuck off? But it's also like, what is, cause that, cause that, but then I think you allow your, what, what's, what's potentially really valid about that, not that experience, but like, <laughs> is that, um, cause I think, you know, that, that feels like often a, a response of like, yeah, everyone finds that difficult. Just fucking get on with it. Mm. Like, mm. Uh, uh, which sometimes I've needed, definitely. Sometimes yes. I've needed that. Yes. And that's that's a really taboo thing, I think, is that sometimes, as a neurodivergent person, what I've needed is someone to say, yes, you can do it. Like, get on with it. Yeah. And we, we I think, understandably, we're very cautious around that kind of approach. But I've definitely needed it. And I can feel sometimes that as a as somebody who occasionally teaches or mentors, I think what my role is here is to go like, come on, you just need to do the work. And uh, and I'm really resistant to that. And I probably haven't done it when maybe I should um, because of that feeling of not wanting to shame someone. Mm. Uh, and because the taboo around that shame is... But I also think, I'm trying to think where I was going with this, because you said it's not really good. And, um, that like, yeah, so the, what could be good about that as well is that we begin to reframe the way we think about laziness. Mm. So actually there is no such thing as just laziness. Mm. Like, or like there's no such thing as like, you know, like not trying hard enough. There is, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Or, uh, yeah. Um, 
and you can be more... Well, those things are more related. We can't split those things into separate accounts. Yeah, like, and it's not, well, it's not no useful to do that. So if I... Or maybe it is. But yeah. <laughs> but, like, no, no. but like, for me, like, I, 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 I go like... I'm going to go... I don't know whether this is dyspraxic or laziness or like obtuseness or like being a, a straight, white, cis, hat bloke. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, like... Um, which one of those things it is, but, it but is. I'm going to call it dyspraxia because I thought yeah. that I have the right to do that. Yes, I, yes. Because so, yes. from so much of my life before I was diagnosed, they would have been called other things. Yeah. Um. Shame, 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 shame. Shame, 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 shame. It really feels like you had a set number of shames that you were going to do and that you were just going to finish. It was more that I began to feel ashamed about it. Yeah, I felt that from you. I didn't like it. Because we'd be even talking about shame. and Yeah. Because I just talked about my relationship with shame. Yeah. Was I think, and I think that like even like, even pretend actions have real impacts. Yeah. And I, I don't usually think that, but just for some reason it just crept into me in that moment where I was like, oh, I don't like this. Shame, 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 shame. Right.